electrical made easy, boat systems and how to fix them. This is part three of a four part video series to help you to repair your boat yourself. Let's recap on what we learned in the last two videos. We learned that voltage is pressure, amps are flow and watts are work done. We learned that electricity flows in circuits from positive to negative and that there's resistance in all circuits. We also learnt that higher voltages are more efficient than lower voltages. We also learnt about Ohm's law and how to do Ohm's law calculations, i equals V over R. Ohm's is a measurement of resistance. Ohm's law can tell us what a resistance should be if we know two of the other values. Ohm's law is I equals V over R, where I is amps. All electrical components including wires, joints, motors, heaters, relays, batteries and even connectors have a resistance. Ohm's law is fundamental to fault finding, so let's just go over it and look at it in a different way. Let's say for example that we have a circuit with a potential of 1 volt, a current of 1 amp and a resistance of 1 ohm. Using Ohm's law we can say 1 volt equals 1 amp or 1 ohm. So using our water tower diagram, let's say this represents our tank with a wide hose. The amount of water in the tank defined as 1 volt and the narrowness resistance to flow of the hose is defined as 1 ohm. Using Ohm's law, this gives us a flow or current of 1 amp. Using the same analogy, let's look at the tank with a narrow hose. Because the hose is narrower, its resistance to flow is higher. Let's define this as a resistance of 2 ohms. But what's the current? Well, because the resistance is greater and the voltage the same, this gives us a current value of 0.5 amps. So pictorially, it looks like this. 1 volt equals 0.5 amps at 2 ohms. Hopefully a different illustration and a different explanation will make it easier to understand. Once you've mastered this and the power triangle, you're on your way to fault finding. Now we said that electricity flows in circuits, but we don't always draw the whole circuit. Look at this one. We haven't drawn the return path for the negative, and that's because it's easier to draw and less complicated. You'll quite often find circuits drawn like this, where the negative returns to ground, or the ground is common. Either way, the circuit's still complete, it's just not fully illustrated. Using the same circuit, we've now added a switch, and the switch is called open, so the circuit is open. The electricity cannot flow because the switch is open and the circuit is not complete. So when we close the switch, the circuit's complete, and work can be done in the pump or lamp or whatever it is we're powering. So think of a switch as an interrupter. It just interrupts the circuit or breaks it. With the switch closed, the circuit's complete. When it's open, it's interrupted. Now there's another way of interrupting a circuit, by using a fuse. A fuse is simply a weak link in that circuit. If too much current flows in the circuit, then the fuse will blow. Even if the switch is still closed, electricity cannot flow. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of different types of fuses, and I won't go into them all now, but again there's a few fundamentals that you need to understand. So we said to think of a fuse as a weak link in a circuit. If the current in that circuit exceeds the fuse rating, the fuse will blow, causing an open circuit, like opening the switch in a way. If there is no circuit, then no work can be done. So we need to make sure we have the right fuse for the voltage and amperage. Both the component, the pump or light for instance, and the cable needs to be protected. Fuse also protects cables from passing too much current in the same way. Now all fuses have a fuse factor, or a rating which is a factor of the amperage at which the fuse will blow. Here's an example. A 10 amp fuse with a fuse factor of 1.5 will actually blow at 15 amps. This may significantly affect the safety of that circuit or the cables. So be careful, pay attention to fuses when replacing them, make sure you have the right fusing factor. Never place a fuse into a circuit until you know the reason it has blown. Now because fuses are put in to protect the component and the cables, it's the first place to look 
when you're fault finding, if the component isn't working. With the blown fuse the circuit is open and the component can't work, no work can be done. So let's summarise what we've learnt in this section. The return path or negative part of a circuit is often common to a number of items and is not always drawn in a diagram, but this is not always the case. A switch that is closed completes the circuit, turning on components. A fuse protects the cable and the components from taking too much current in amps. When it blows, it works like a switch, interrupting the circuit, effectively opening the circuit, and with no circuit, no work can be done. So we've looked at batteries that provide DC or direct current. The current flows smoothly through the circuit. As it does so, it actually creates an electromagnetic field around and through the cables. When the current is switched on, it induces a magnetic field or a magnet with a north and south pole, just like a compass. Now this field of magnetism is quite complicated and would take a whole video on its own to explain. However, if you coil a wire around something and put a current through it, you can make a very powerful magnet. Every school child knows. If you push the two south poles together, they repel, or the two north poles, but if you put the north and the south together, they attract. That's actually how starter motors work, but we'll go into that later. The fundamentals are that when you pass current through a cable, it produces an electromagnetic field. So let's look at this simple circuit. We've wrapped a coil of wire around an iron or steel rod. We close the switch, we create a magnetic field in the rod, just like a magnet or a compass needle. This is an electromagnet. The current is inducing magnetism into the rod from the electricity. This magnet can be used to move things. So in this illustration, we've turned the coil in a different direction, just to make it easier to understand. We could use this powerful magnet to close another switch, a really big one carrying lots of amps. A small circuit is switched on and the magnet is energised. The big circuit has a big switch that is closed when the coil's magnet attracts it. We've simplified this drawing just to show the principle, but the theory is how both solenoids and relays work. A small circuit activates a magnet which closes a big switch in a big circuit. So what actually happens in a solenoid is the switch contacts are connected to a steel rod and the wire coil is actually hollow. When the switch is closed the rod is drawn into the coil closing the big switch contacts. In relays there is a switch that is pulled open or closed when a small circuit is switched on. You can find these types of switches on starter motors, solenoids and engine relays. Most of the systems on a bigger boat are controlled by relays or solenoids. So once again let's summarise what we've learnt in the last section. Where electricity flows it induces magnetism into cables. With a battery or DC direct current this magnetism is in one direction. Passing electricity through a coil of wire will make an electromagnet. We can use this magnet to do work, mechanical work, like opening or closing a big switch. It's this principle which is how relays and solenoids both work. We've simplified it, but yeah, that's how they work. Pretty simple really, eh? So what is AC, alternating current? Alternating current, AC, is an electric current that periodically reverses direction in contrast to direct current which is smooth as we spoke about earlier and only in one direction. In the UK and the rest of Europe that direction changes 50 times a second. We call this its frequency and we measure frequency in Hertz. So our power in Europe is 230 220 volts AC at 50 Hertz. In America the power is transmitted at 60 Hertz. This difference in frequency has an effect on things like motors, compressors and a few other things. But fundamentally, the principle is the same. An AC is exactly what it says, alternating current. And there's a great illustration of this which I've used courtesy of the American Welding Association. 
it really shows you exactly how the current flows one way and then back the other. So here's a cliffhanger. How do you think AC will affect a coil? How would a magnetism work? But I'll give you a clue. With AC, you can do all sorts of things with coils and magnetism. You can even change the voltage. But more about that next time. We make these videos for you to share our knowledge. We hope they help. Please like, share and subscribe and give us a thumbs up. And comment below. Sounds safe. safe.